Dear Lord, wherever everyone is, just be with them, bless them, let your love and presence be with them. Let them know that we love them and look forward to seeing them. And we come together now to worship and honour you. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Okay, so we're up to parable six out of the over 40 parables that the Lord told us. Parable six, so right at the beginning. And you'll notice here it's part one which means if we uh, go into January, we have a meeting in January, 2nd of January, we do part two then. I've got a copy of here somewhere else this and some digital printouts. The reason, this, the reason most parables later on get broken up the sacred circle into two or three studies is because there is just too much information. It's just too much coming out of the parables. Awesome idea. Yeah, I don't know. Too much in the parables coming out to squish it all into a short little study. But this is different. This one, when I was looking at it, it, it felt right in me to break this into two studies. And the first study is in the spiritual sense, meaning what's going on inside of me, in me. We use that a lot in the church, in me. So we're looking at the merchant man who is seeking for pearls. Come, come up. No, no, we have a we just introduction we now. Just no worries. Started. Come, come. No, come in the circle. No, no, come in. Come on. Um, John, John, John. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. okay. Hello, Hello darling. Hi, Jonah. Hello. I'm just bring the chair over. Yeah. Oh, Gwen's oh, already done it. She, she. Okay, she. So we, you haven't missed anything. I'll just quickly recap. Just quickly recap. Parable number six: the merchant seeking pearls has been broken into two studies. So we do. We'll go through one study today, and the next sacred circle will go through the second study of the, the merchant seeking. Oh, you've got part two. Does that mean I'm going to make you run it? In January. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Knowles got part two. Part one. A couple of part twos accidentally. Have you got so, part one? No, there's only two part twos. Oh, okay, okay. The part one, we're looking at this in terms of what's going on inside of me. So that means the merchant seeking the pearl is going to be you and I. We're the one that's looking for the pearl. But when we get to part two, we're going to look at it from the point of view of the Lord is the one being the merchant seeking the pearl. And it will it, it brings it up into the celestial. And we'll look at that next time. Is this a pearl of great price? Well this is the pearl of great price, yeah. That's a moment we've got a book called that. No, no, pearl of great price. Yeah, there's a book called the pearl of great price. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> no, we'll go ahead and read. Yes? Yeah, go, go ahead and read. What do you want me to read? Well, acknowledging, uh, acknowledgement as a spiritual practice. This is the sixth parable of the Kingdom of Heaven series. It's on the spiritual level. It is us, the advancing soul, as a merchant man. So read the parable and kick it to the end. Okay, so Matthew, man. Matthew, again, the Kingdom of Heaven is like unto a merchant man, sick and good with pearls, who, when he had found one for a great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Instruction? 
Acknowledging the divinity of the word and the need for its incarnation, through this parable, the hidden treasure, we are led to the realization that the advancing soul holds treasures in the heart and mind that the world cannot recognize and therefore value. Now in this parable, we are introduced to the idea that there is one supreme treasure above all others. The treasure is God's love for his creation. However, the darkness stripping all souls have blinded the mind to the this truth. Instead, all things are viewed from the skewed perspective of self. What is, what's in it for me? Shouts the Lord in the Meanwhile, the gift of God's love is missed. That is until the acknowledgement of the Lord has found that his word has been awakened in the heart of the soul. The Lord, through intense compassion, descends into the awareness of our mind. This descent first takes place in the revelation of the incarnation and glorification of the Lord in time and space. The second descent occurs when the love of God, the sleep of treasures, truth, the advancing soul, or the emerging mind discovers the true nature of the further great piety. The Lord is not only present in history, but also fully present and descending the second coming in the spiritual sense of his word. Right. Is there any comments or questions or, or thoughts that you want to share about that? My wonder is the same as this, this sentence. Now, in this parable, we are interested in the idea that there's no, that one supreme treasure about four others. Uh, however, the second is written in all souls and blinded the mind through the two fully two. I'm wondering how can we understand the difference? Going the people who are so keen to search and search the truth, and the people who is completely blinded on the knowledge about the truth. I I I can't understand what is different, what is in their mind, but when I recall my theory, that was that person. <laughs> I didn't care about the truth for truth. I, I hate to hear, to hear the word God. So then whenever I hear the preach, I, I dislike, dislike. <laughs> but looking back, my pathway, I don't know what happened. From what day of whom preach event, I became interested in seeking, in seeking this live truth. Yeah. So I think it, 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 is, it is useless to, 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 to try to understand what, what different people do to pass for I, I think it's useless to try and pinpoint this one. The, the moment or, or, or how or why that moment changed for you, to pinpoint that is, is useless. But there is a lot of value in understanding what has happened to us. That there's something really. Now, I don't know if anybody else wants to comment. Yeah, a comment. Yep, okay, don't lose it because I might as well jump in here. Yeah. One morning I took off from Brisbane Airport and there was such a bad storm in Brisbane, I was wondering whether the plane was even going to take off. It was that bad. But they took off. Miserable, dark, stormy, wet weather. And I never really thought about it, but after about 15 minutes, or a little, a little bit after that, the plane broke through the storm and was flying above a whole new landscape. Mm -hmm. And the sun was shining, it was early in the morning. It was delightful up there. And I realized the sun hadn't gone anywhere. Often when we're down here, under the darkness, under the shadow, under the cloud, we, we, we wonder, you know, where's God? Where, where's God? Where, where did the sun go? It hasn't gone anywhere. So there are moments, we've all seen moments where the storm begins to break and that sun burst through like a ray, that's the moment where we're changed. Because the scripture says, we, we love because he first loved us. So like you, all of us at some point were not interested in God and maybe even aggressive towards the idea. In somewhere, we got a taste. It was a breakthrough, like that light. 
And we went, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Wow, God is actually... I remember when I first really encountered God and I thought, this book, the Bible, is an amazing, incredible, intoxicating book. I didn't realise. I remember being a little child and looking at the Bible and thinking it was one thing. Now, after tasting God's love and opening it and reading and seeing love in it, this book isn't what I thought it was. So I had these preconceived ideas of what God or the Bible or church or religion is. And we all do. A lot of us do. Right? So like you, I, I, I can't quite say the moment, but somewhere in there, the love that the light got through, and we tasted love. And, and now, as we're maturing, we're realising, I need to become love. There's a world out there that needs me and you and all of us to become love. Is that spiritual regeneration? Well, when we first spirit, even when God first loves us, we're still a lot selfish. There's still a lot yeah. of selfishness. You know, oh God, this feels so good. I'm being loved by you. It's so good. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point where we mature and we realise if I don't start loving other people, they're going to be like one, thinking this whole God thing is horrible. Don't don't talk to me about that. But when, when we begin to love other people and they taste love, that's the moment where I think we, we really change. Well, what do you think? Uh, this is a way also you wish to give the people who believe in God, but who hate the sweet of life. <laughs> too yeah. much light, too much light I, coming I'm through. Sure a lot of people <laughs> introduce the sweet of life to other, other religious people, all other church people, but they can go away. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, one day, some of these people can become the true Jesus. Thank you. Oh, don't forget you've got a point. The people who turn away are turned away by people in authority. They're not turned away by themselves because they don't even look at Sweden Yeah, of course. They yeah. listen to somebody who purports to be the authority figure. I just had Jonathan Williams on the Gold, on the Gold Coast last week. He was to go to with a friend to a service in a Pentecostal church, and he mentioned Swedenborg, and this friend immediately rejected him. And so I wrote, he wrote to me a text message and I wrote back to him and I said, 110%, your friend has not even opened a page to look at Swedenborg himself. He yeah. has listened to some person in authority. Yeah. And unfortunately, one, the people in authority are often protecting their own little empire. Yes. Empire. And, and, and they don't want any perceived challenge. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot yeah. of there's a lot of vested interest in religious organisations. A lot of vested interest. So it's not people rejecting Swedenborg, it's people who won't make their own effort to have a look and say, well, this is, I've been told this is a cult, but that's not what I'm getting out of it. Mm. That's all we ask of people. Why do you reject? Why? What have you read? What have you seen for yourself? Why don't you think? Yes, why don't you why think? Why don't you think? Why don't you, why don't you think? Put some effort or work into it. Mm. Yeah. Why don't you put some Make work? an educated decision. I'm working in a brethren church and no offense to anyone, but the judgment oh. I'm getting is just... Yeah. Yeah. And one lady, she was drunk on gospel, like absolutely drunk. And she said, so what do you fellowship, Chris? And so, oh, What's that? I said, we, we explored the spiritual meanings in the Bible, and I left it at that. Mm, now she won't talk to me. Um, <laughs> just drunk on gospel, and I had to put her in a place where she said, you know, and this was looking at me, these people are going to come to Jesus Christ. She drives a Jesus bus, her and her husband. It's got Jesus all over the side. Bless her, she means well. Yeah. And 
She said, but you do know, Chris, that the only way it says is try Jesus Christ and I've just gone. Anyway, I said, look, how do you explain a man living in the middle of the Congo in the jungle? I said it nicely. He doesn't know Jesus Christ. He's going to go to jail. Uh, yeah. He's down in the prison. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, hell. He doesn't want to go there. He's provided for everyone in his family. What do you say? Oh, but all that love comes from God. Now she's changing her tune. Romans chapter 2 says exactly what you're saying. It says people that don't have the law or the knowledge of God have it written in their hearts. And if they obey it, then they stand right before God, whether they have an external knowledge of Jesus Christ in the law or not. They're worshipping by doing what God wants us to do. Is, yeah. And this is the way I, I explain it too, is God is our parent. As a parent, when you see your siblings loving one another, mm. I would rather that than, mm -hmm. Dad, you're awesome, Dad, you're awesome, you're the best, Dad, you're so cool, I do everything for you, Dad. I don't want that. I want you to love your brothers wow. and sisters, your mates. That's what I want. That's, that's a great what analogy, mean, Chris. That's such a good analogy. So, and well acted. <laughs> yeah, and that's how I put it. I say, that's great. You've got to think of God as a parent. Mm -hmm. And we don't want people groveling mm -hmm. to us. I saw a sign the other day outside the church that said, Jesus Christ was here to serve, not be served. Mm. The blasphemy against the Son of Man will be here. Yeah. In fact, there's a passage, and we're not forgetting that, there's a passage in the Old Testament, I think it's Isaiah, and it says, because of you, it's talking to the Jews at that time, right? And the way they were practicing their form of religion. And the Lord says through Isaiah, because of you, the Gentiles blaspheme my name all day long. So if we flip that into a New Testament sense, there are Christians today, because of the way they practice their Christianity, there are non-Christians who are blaspheming the name of God all day long because of the example that person is living. You know, what, 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 what speaks louder than words? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Paul, now you go. Do you, have you held your thought? I have uh, a hope and chance to this question, which is, is why don't people come to God? Why don't that? So I was listening to Russell Brown, I don't know if he's a comedian. So he was addicted to drugs, he was addicted to sex, he went to Hollywood, he was a movie star, he's a comedian. He said he did all those things, but none of those things brought him to what the satisfaction of God he was going to get. Mm. So I think what happens human beings is. Uh, either we're on a lower level and we're, we think the things of the world are going to satisfy us. Mm -hmm. and so he tried all those things and he thought once he was in that environment, it would bring him the happiness he wanted. But when he discovered that he did it, he then went on a spiritual path. So he is now kind of more like the Hindu uh, reincarnated. He's kind of, so he's on the path, but he's gone from being really selfish, thinking of yourself, being a sex addict, being a drug addict, uh, being really egotistical. He's gone from that to he's on a path now where he's searching. So I think what the problem is, the, the difference between the person who's not on the path and ones who are, the ones who are not on the spiritual path, they still think that the offerings of the world are going to Absolutely. give them their satisfaction. Absolutely. It's only when they get it, and they discover it doesn't, they will then look on another path. So if most people are sort of looking down on that path and it's realistic path, mm. if they never, uh, if they think, if I win the lottery, or if I'm going to get this, I'm going to get a Tesla car, mm. whatever, that's, so when they, it's only when they get it and realize it hasn't been given that value, that's when they start to and a lot of people don't even get to that point. Which is another parable, what you're saying, Paul, the prodigal son who goes off and finally has to get to the end of himself and then starts asking the questions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shall we keep going? Is there any other comments or thoughts before we dig in? No. I was a lot Look, I think the world is alluring because the, the God made it with good in it. It's the good in there that allures us. But if it's disconnected from the Lord, then that good isn't really good. And that's why in the very first story, Garden of Eden, 
there was the knowledge of good and evil, and that tree didn't didn't bring them life, it, it killed them. Okay, let's plow into this. Great sharing, guys, that was really good. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man, the advancing soul seeking to fulfill the high, high calling of heaven. The great quest before all of us is to allow heaven to descend upon the earth of our human form. This involves a complete transformation of one's life from the inside out. Outwardly, this transformation is not always so obvious. However, inwardly, the transformation is a complete reversal from a self-driven life, Russell Brand example, to a life directed by heaven's light, day one, and heaven's heat, day two. This quest to become heavenly leads us to become the merchant seeking heavenly treasures. So it's interesting, I'll just say here, it's interesting, what I like about the new age is how much they go after spiritual treasures and wisdom and really lift that up. What I really hate about it is they don't understand where the source of all that life is coming from. They, they, they're finding these little... The universe. The universe. <laughs> the universe. Yeah. They're finding these little pockets of wisdom and they're obviously attracted to it and they like it, but they don't know the source. And that's a lot of what this parable is about. The pearl, above every other pearl, is finding out, is not just uh, giving a man a glass of water or catching him a fish. It's teaching him how to dig a well or how to fish for himself by leading them to the Lord, leading them to the very source of all life, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so I think uh, this new age people, they're looking for a shortcut, like if you if you guys have got the secret was the big thing, if you get into a certain vibration and all these other things, so there's they're looking for something but they're still looking for to my mind a shortcut, something that will give them what they the telegram price, but without having to do all the work. Yes. Every that's good. shortcut every shortcut is a manifestation of a of a false faith, and yeah. that is faith alone. Yeah. Right. We live in a world right. permeated by the old teaching of faith alone, instant salvation, right. meaning yeah. instant satisfaction, must have it yesterday, yeah. and if there's some shortcuts, I'll take it. Yeah. Instant gratification. Yeah. So yeah. Most people through this whole process are still owning, owning. So they still go, I'm going to be good. Yes. I am doing this. So this, this is what I'm looking for shortcuts. Is, well, is there something I can do to put me in that right to Still very self, still self focused. Still very yeah. owning it instead yeah. of and what you have to do, and that's not an easy sell, is well actually I'm completely humbled, dependent. Nothing good comes out of me personally mm, and, right. and putting that aside. That, that is a very scary thing to, right. to, to do, right? To, to acknowledge. So, so, and that's, that's what you know, my experience is, you know, what, what Brian was talking about before, is rejecting the idea of God. Because as soon as you accept the idea of an all-powerful, infinite being, that means that I'm now dependent. Very clearly so. I'm accountable. And, 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 the, and it's very, very mm. uncomfortable yeah. from a position where you're not. Mm. Everything is careless and free, particularly when you're young. You know, you're still finding your way out. And, and that's a gift of the grace of God as well, right? That, that, that seemingly autonomous existence that you have to kind of break through. And at some point, you start to realize actually, as the innate, inner yearning to return. God in you seeks to connect you back. Mm. You go, well, you're starting to look for things and you realize, well, actually, there has to be a divine for life to actually exist. Yeah, cool. For wow. purpose and hope to exist and all of those things. Once you start to realize that, now all of a sudden, now you're butting up against that friction. You go, well, am I going to accept this or not? And for a while, you push back against it and reject it. I don't like this because then you know, but you know already in your mind that you like you have to accept, mm. and then the point comes mm. like an earth, like that 
to that you're accepting it that can be a very powerful thing but but that is un, that's very that, that, that can happen very subtly in our walk too like there's you're talking about something very very clear mm. I'm I, I'm not believing actually I see there is a, some evidence for a divine uh, I'm believing very clear but let's sort of and that's excellent, thank you. Let's bring that into our walk where we're believing and we're practicing and we're years of practicing and what we're doing is still the holding on. Now, if we use the idea of God's life being like water, living water, water is best when it's in motion. It's either evaporating up and then it becomes rain and falls into the mountains and it travels down and there's that cycle. But we like to, a bit like what I was saying about the New Age earlier, we like to catch on and hold on with our ego to the water, but as soon as you pull the water, it becomes stagnant. It's just stagnant, isn't it? When the mosquitoes get in, all the frogs get in, all the... But if we can let it flow, when we, when we let go of ego, it's not about me, I don't... Let my name perish, who cares? God can flow more through us, and we get more and more blessings, and it's not stagnant. It doesn't you know, it stay, it stays living and flowing. And there's a scripture again in Jeremiah where he says, you've committed two grave errors. He says to my people, he says, one, you've forsaken me, the source of living waters. Two, you've hewn out pots for yourselves to carry your own water. Isn't that interesting? Uh, interesting. We do this. Oh, oh that's my, I got that truth. Oh, I want that. That's great. I'll hold on to that. I'll take a bit of ownership over it. Let me tell you, Sean, this great truth. <laughs> oh, so clever. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and instead of just letting it flow, let it flow between. That's what I love about Sacred Circle is the way it just comes out of each of you. I see it flowing. You know, it's just beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to stop holding on to the pot and I'll hand it around a bit more. Let's read in that. Is there any other comment before I read on a bit more? No? Let's read on a bit more. Okay, seeking the affection for truth. There's that yearning that you were talking about, Paul, that yearning inside. Seeking the affection for truth, placing the good of heaven above all natural goods, even a Tesla. Okay. Before the advancing soul was awakened to spiritual life, the only dictates and drives of the soul were natural and earthly. However, inside each one of us are the sacred seven that lie dormant. Once awakened, these seven drives are found in the archetypes of the seven day, uh, of the seven day, seven days, will seek to be expressed and find fulfillment in one's life. Ignoring these drives will only lead to frustration and the ultimate disappointment. And I think of Russell Brand again, or anyone on that path, and they will tell you early on that they are getting fulfilled by the party and the drugs and the sex and all that stuff. It's, it, they are getting some fulfillment because they're answering their earthly drives initially. But there comes a point where all of that becomes very stale and mundane and then up rises the calling of the soul. You are made for something much greater than this. And ignore that and you're really going to suffer. <laughs> you know, Once it's awakened, I mean, once, once that's truly awakened, don't ignore those inner I guess callings. That's why tribal people to the elders. Yeah. Because of just what you're saying there. They've, they've done all the earthly stuff. It didn't satisfy them. And they became the elders because, years, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 you become wiser, I guess. You realize those things. And that's how, honestly, I think tribal people I think in, in our society, we don't. I think the ego overlooks. The value that we have in That's you just made me have an amazing realization as you said that, Chris, because you know, we, we see in our generation, the Google generation, if I can put it that way, where you don't know an answer to something, just go Google it, isn't it? And you can find more videos than ever on anything. Where early on, when I first started getting into adulthood, I'd still visit a library or I'd go seeking information, or I'd find an elder, someone who had a bit of knowledge and I've learned from them. And I can see how the whole Google thing has replaced it quite successfully, and it works, until what you're talking about, Chris, until you, you've exhausted all uh, the, the, the natural drives and you want answers to the spiritual drives, good luck. You know, Google isn't gonna be able to answer your spirit. 
An encyclopedia is not going to give you what the what people who've mastered and conquered their ego can give you, the elders. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? Shall we move to Dr. Noel? Would you like to read a few paragraphs for us? Goodly pearls. Hmm. Goodly pearls, desiring a heavenly character, a longing to be like the Lord. Hmm. Each of the seven tribes of the soul contains the lights and the bliss of heaven, and they're expressed to grow a heavenly and peaceful life of service. Hmm. Who, when he had found one word of great price, the revelation of the incarnation of the Lord as God, come and come and us, the Lord fully present in his work. The greatest of all loves and delights is to know and encounter the supreme being, the divine, the Lord in the world. A dancing soul is content to be of service to others, purely for the sake of goodness. Equally, a dancing soul is satisfied to grow with the knowledge and the revelation of truth. However, at special moments, the lover of God is scripture with a quickening in the Father's love. These moments leave the soul thirsting for more of the Lord's attention. For the hungry and thirsty soul, we need to go no further than the word which is deeply of a relationship with him. For the Lord truly is the pearl of great Christ, hidden and waiting to be discovered in the inner sense of the universe. In the twelve gates, by twelve birds, every several came for one of the birds. And the secret of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent to us. Mm. I am the Lord. By me, if anyone entering, he shall be saved. Wow. Does that change your thoughts about the pearl now? I mean, the pearl, there are so many pearls in sacred texts, so many revelations, so many moments where you just go, oh, oh, I just need to stop for a moment and, and, and not lose this incredible feeling and incredible thought that I've had. Anyone got a pen? You know, that sort of moment. But, but then there comes, I found in my walk, there comes beyond that, these glimpses of the Lord. And they are, you know, they're like a thousand, every thousandth pearl is a glimpse of the Lord. And I go, oh, it's him. That's who I want to really know. That's the one I want to seek and know. So we're, he, he's training us, you know, he's giving us these pearls and we're getting excited. And then he's, he's leading us to this great realization of the divine. But I love the way sacred text then puts it into this picture of a city that has gates made out of pearls. So, so what is that saying to us? Like, what, what, What's that saying about if these pearls are our affection and encounter with divine moments and divine revelation? What's that say about the city? What do you reckon, Jane? What's it say about the city? No, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, not Actually, They're pathways. The, good word, uh, good word. If you see the, like for example, compare a sun to the light and the warmth, which never changes. It's the quality of the sun is light and mm. warmth. Mm. So the quality of God is love. Yeah. So he's always, his only definition is love. And whatever we try to do, he is not changeable. His quality of love always remains. But we are not able to enter through the gate, whichever gate you are choosing. Mm. You are not able to reach him because you have chosen the wrong gate or going in different directions right. in life. So if you understand the basics, that God is love and love and love, like a true parent, we have nothing to worry because we need to, we need to adjust our goals or our goals to reach him through the love format. That's right. why the service comes into picture. So the more we service, more we take the neighborly love as our love, yes. then the gate opens up. If we are selfish in our activities and in our thinking and our progress, that gate takes you to the worldly affairs. 
Yes. So we need to we need to choose our own holes and our own gateways to reach him through love, which is selfless love, yes. not the selfish love. So the song is that thing. It's beautiful. That's and is there the thing something comes to mind, Gary the straight and narrow. Right. So um, what I'm getting out of this is how I can see it now if you go in the straight and narrow I'm I'm seeing the gates but Going straight and narrow is you're not keeping your eye off New Jerusalem, which is the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. So, we're distracted. Yeah, we're not distracted, so we're seeing that. And if we could put that into our practice of everyday life, how good would it be? Yeah. But it's hard. We're, oh, it's a battle. We're, and that's why we're, we're earthly beings for a reason it is to have a quick look out there and get back to straight now. Yeah, that's about Good. influx as it's, well. It, 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 yeah. This is this is where you come back to the first letter you talked about with Jesus on the bus, you know. So there are people that think that that is the life that they're called to do. Right. That everything becomes about religion and focus, and that's a sli kind of slavery, mental slavery that is really unhealthy, and you feel sorry for people like that. Because and, and that gives religion a bad name. And so it, it's a blessing in this whole thing that we're called to oscillate in and out of the natural because it kind of, well, we're getting so stiff as we can't be in that because that's not us. We're just taking a little bite of that goodness and bring it back into the natural life and then we learn it and apply it and we realize, okay, we need to shift a little bit here and bring a bit more of heaven into it. And then go back and take a little bit like swimming, you know, every now and then you come up for air and then you go it's back like down. It's like breathing, you know, yeah. it's like breathing. It's controlling our influx, the evil but spirits and angels, the messages that we're listening to and shun the evil spirits and then focus on the angelic there's a really good of Sorry. Of providence, yeah. There's a really good passage where Swedenborg says inside each one of us are two gates. Yeah. And we, we can open those doors. Open and close. One gate opens to selfishness and hell, and the other gate opens to the Lord. But but I think you you know everyone's getting it like bits and pieces, but like you said, Dr. Noel, the gate is the determination to love someone and then do it. Being and that school. opens that opens the right gate. That, that gets your eye on the pearl, doesn't it, Chris? Mm -hmm. I'm going to love my children, even if I'm finding it hard to love them today, whatever. <laughs> or, or it could be a spouse, it could be a person at work, <laughs> it could be a parent. We've all got people in our lives that make it hard. It makes it hard to practice charity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but see, this terms love and charity. Yes. You know, we think we understand them. Yes. Yeah. Right, but we don't. No. And these are loaded terms. They're very loaded. And and when you when you take those terms and the definitions from the world as to what love means, like what is it? Love is all you need from the Beatles or whatever else. You think, oh yeah, that's right. But you know, love without wisdom doesn't you know doesn't bring to bear what it should be doing. Right? It's just, so it, it's it's very tricky. So you know, to, to love somebody, well, doesn't mean you're just going to accept them and do whatever they do or, or you know, like, so saying no. that, you know, all that. Mm. So these are very t difficult interaction decisions that we're having with the world all the time. Yes. Because we're asked to be discerning at the same time. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we check right. our intentions and how we were right to Look, I could have it wrong, but I thought the song, All You Need Is Love, la, 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 la. I thought there was a part in the song which says, All you need is love, love, love and understanding. Isn't there a line? No, no, that's no. all you need. I've come from a different reality. There, there used to be that line no, in there, love and understanding. No, 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 no. I remember thinking, ah, they finally you got it. You knew you'd know, Chris, you'd know. Yeah, in the early 80s, you know, all you need is love and understanding. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah,
now you start to understand. You need wisdom. And wisdom, of course, of what charity really is. Mm. Now all of a sudden you're looking at the world so differently. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's a very fundamental. Love is life, mm. and the life is God. Mm. And that defines everything. Because whatever, all of us, whatever you have is life, and that life is God. Mm. So you're not somebody, somebody outside of us or somebody in the heaven or elsewhere. He's inside us. Mm. Mm. So God and I is the, is the twin in one. Mm. Mm. So there's nothing separate. Mm. Like in the sun, the warmth and light are part of uh, the sun. You can't separate them, can you? You can't separate. There is no out Maybe there. You out can there. close your eyes and say, no, no, there is the darkness. But the sun is not darkness, it's always light. Mm. It's always warmth. Yeah, so the it's the character. So the life is mm. love. The love is God. <laughs> so it is a very fundamental, you know. And, and like, like Paul saying, we, endeavoring to be like the Lord, can kind of fracture it all up. If, if you think about it, you can have light that's cold. But you can, have, you can get under the hot shower and you can have heat but no light at all. So there's your love without the wisdom, isn't it? You know? <clears throat> if it, the sun needs light and heat to be the sun, doesn't it? Yeah. Needs the two together, not separated. Yeah, good. Excellent. Do you want to read a bit more for us, Dr. Noel? The lower ego finds no greater delight than to take ownership and credit for anything of worth or value in this life. However, his fallen ego is woefully inadequate for identifying true spiritual values. There, an advancing soul, on the other hand, has received the awakening of the higher ego, day two, and can therefore receive wisdom from the Lord and the angels concerning the real eternal treasure. Once awakened to the truth, the advancing soul finds delight and joy in removing the influence of the lower ego and its power tendency to own what rightly belongs to the Lord, life, love, Place and every goodness along with its counterpart of wisdom, truth, and knowledge. Wow. And that was from the verse, went and sold all that he had. Now that's, you know, uh, to give up or surrender, to shun self and lower ego. Think about in mainstream Christendom over 2,000 years, Christian seekers have read the scriptures and gone, went and sold all that he had. Oh no, now I need to sell the house farm and the tractor and need to just take a sack and wander. I mean this really without a spiritual understanding this is itself has been a trap for many people. Many people have wandered off into mission fields thinking they're going to find the Lord there and they're still running from the real process, the real practice of let self die here. If self dies here we can truly let love out others and you don't need to be mission field may be where the Lord's asked you to be and if he has go but be sure that you're not running from ego because that is the only way you can sell all that you are owning or have ego and it's a very freeing place to come where you go well everything I have is really just you know you die and you leave it behind it's a very freeing place just to go it's just energy to serve a greater purpose. And there's a faith in that too, where you can trust the Lord for more of it to come in. But, but I'm finding whenever I'm in the ego, fear, hold on to it. Something, someone may try to take it away from you. You might lose it. How will I get more? That's what, you know, fear. Isn't it funny? Because last Sunday we talked about fear. Um, yeah, so it, the, the selling all we have is not about not having stuff. It's all about stuff, not having you. That's what it's about. Now, you, now someone had their hand. Are you on your hand? I just want to give an example of uh, the difference between love and wisdom. <coughs> so, my idea was if I saw someone homeless, I'd go and go and shop, I'd feed them, I'd get them something. Uh, so, I thought I was being loving by feeding them. Right. But then I read Swedenborg, he was saying sometimes if you've got money and you give it to someone who is bad, he's saying they, they can take what you've got from a loving idea and they can turn around and say, they, if you give money to someone and then they go and use it by the knife and they use it to rob someone or kill someone. So he said, so your your motivation is love, but if you don't deal with wisdom 
uh, that can be turned into something else. You've so empowered their evil. You've empowered them, yes. So mm. I think so now. I think uh, I'm a little bit different. So I'm thinking, well, okay, there's someone. Happy. Do I feed them or do I say, I've got money. Can I give that to a charity or a group where I know that money is going to be used for good? So I'm not saying that I don't want to feed them anymore, but it stopped me thinking. Okay, am I being wise as well as being loving? And so Sweden more often to think differently on that kind of example. Yeah, so good, they do good need example. to do it time and time. Yeah, wisdom and love together. Yeah. yeah. And that's because you never know, see when you want to give something, yeah. there should not be a discretion. <coughs> you want to give, give. Yes. <laughs> but then the moment you know you start analyzing it whether you're the right person to give or right thing to do. No, you you are you are only applying your human mind. Yeah, you when you want to give, just give and forget about it because God wants you to be charitable and give. But he wants us to be give, but he wants us to give it discerningly. He wants us to give something that can be good because uh, in the same way where God's love goes on the good and the bad, so when God's love sh shed on the evil, that love turns from truth to falsity and it goes down. So he's saying the same way, yes. when we're loving, we have to do it with discernment. Discernment. I've been, I'm right in between, yeah. I'm right in between, I'm right in between. Just imagine if God does the same thing as what we are doing, <laughs> yes. where are we? This is what he's telling us. So he doesn't discern, God wants, doesn't right. discern. He just gives, he loves uh, and gives. Uh, 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 he I does, he that. does discern. It? It doesn't, uh, he does, he does. If you keep my commandments then I'll love you. Mm. There is a condition. Mm. God does not love unconditionally. He, at one level he does, one level he does yes. but at another level, yes. his love is only accepted by us if we keep his commandments. Yes. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. So the, we've got to be careful of just saying love, 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 because there is condition, not up there, but down here. Down here. The other thing I want to say is, here's another example. I heard once, this was in England, where the front gate of many houses is quite close to the front window. And ah. somebody who visited them kept being aware of the fact that the gate squeaked. So they thought, oh, I'll, I know what, I'll go and fix that gate for them. Mm. So they poured oil into it. The people in the house were devastated. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because that gate was their alarm for anybody who's coming to the front door. So their love was, ex <laughs> their love was expressed without discernment. Yeah. Now, that's where love and discern, I'll use discern. That's where it comes in. There's got to be a balance. I, I can't, I can't come in on somebody on the top of somebody's life yes. with my love yes. because I can do damage. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's so many examples you can give, and, and same with with homelessness. We we, we care, and we, we 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 feel pain, or we yes. project pain on yes. all these people. But it's, it's like a, the parable of where, like, if you have a pupus and there's a larva developing into a butterfly, you think, hang on, let me just open that up and, and let them Help let them out. out a bit earlier. Yeah. The wings don't develop, yes. and so they die. They don't and it's the same kind of thing with everybody has their own journey and lessons to learn. And so if we're empowering people to, to shun away from actually finding a real job or taking responsibility for their life mm. and we're giving them money as they beg or actually empowering them to do that maybe what we're doing is we're actually not helping them even in our hearts we really love to help them but what we're helping them do is actually run away from their personal responsibility mm. and feeding a kind of a, an addiction of self-entitlement that they're living right and, and we don't know and, and so you might be a hard pass I walk past them I don't give them anything Sometimes, depending on how I'm called to do, I might actually walk in the shop and actually give him a drink or something like yeah. that, buy an extra bottle of water, yeah. come back and here you go, that kind of stuff. But yeah. most of the time I don't because there are channels already in place where people don't really need to. Can, but, I, jump, can I jump in here? Just because I'm thinking of time. Sure. Finish. No, it's great. This is great. Everything is good. And, and I'm not 
trying to be a people pleaser. But but I, all right. You are. You are all right. I mean, the scripture says, God pours the rain on the wicked and the righteous alike. Yes, but it also, that same rain, if I'm not diligent, grows the prickles. And I get hurt when I walk without shoes on my yard. Mm. So, the, so while God pours out the rain, he also pours reason and wisdom into me and says, get out there and mow it. Get out there and mow it. You know, all the snakes, you know, leave it grow real long, the snakes. Mm. So they look, absolutely. Now, I've been in the same conundrum. A number of times where I've given food to people um, and gone, did I do the right thing? And Swedenborg is very clear, you've got to you know, be, be wise. And the only answer I've got, and it's not an easy one, know. is, you know, the scripture says, love the Lord God with all your heart, then do as you please. This is what Dr. Knowles talked about. If you want to give, just give. If, you know, as long as you've spent time with the Lord and you feel this love to give, just give. Go for it. But my challenge is this, if I'm going to buy someone a meal, I need to sit down with them, spend some time with them and say, tell me the story. How did you end up here? Because that's the only way I believe I can do some real lasting good. So while I'm listening to their story, while they're filling their mouth, their ears are a lot more open, and they're eating, and then they say, oh, this happened, that happened. There's a hope that I might speak something, pray something, trigger something that will, you know, allow that cocoon in its own right time to break and they can go move on and yeah. So it's not easy because this costs me even more time than just giving them a meal. I've got to then sit with them and say, tell me your story. How did you end up on, on, on the street like this? This is where we have to be it's sensitive to our own intuition. One of the right? gears you are entering through the hearts and souls of the people. Right? So if you don't open that gate into the heart yeah. and reach your soul, yeah. I think you are wasted your reserve. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's not an easy one, but I can hear what everyone's saying, and I really appreciate Ian coming in, in and saying, um, hang on a sec there. And it wasn't you, Dr. Noll, but there is a world out there that is pushing the lies that love is love. Well, I love to kill people. Did you know that I'm a secret? Uh, I'm not really, I'm just, you know. Uh, what do they call it when you kill lots of people? Um, yeah. yeah. So love is love. And I love to do that. And you, you should accept the fact that I love to do that and, and just let me do what I want to do. No. Come on. That's what you're saying. Love is love. No. Love is selfless. Love is kind. Love doesn't think of itself. Love puts others first. Love suffers long. There's a whole list of what love is in chapter 12 of Corinthians. And, and that's what I think Ian's really pushing back against that but an old saying can come to mind, I think that was in scripture that when we were talking about this, God helps those who help themselves. No scripture. Or charity but starts at home? I know it, but yeah, it's not scripture. So, charity yeah. starts at home, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. so it was. Is this sort of like we're saying? Hey, God helps God, those who help us. Keep going, Chris. Break it out. Break it out. What are you. What are you. I guess. We can try and help people as much as we can, but you can't. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. So all these analogies, all these, they do, in a roundabout way, do come back to spiritual principles. They sure do. Because, and like I've said this before, is that painting that I will never forget, and I've said it a few times, and it's got the Lord at the door, but there's no door handle mm -hmm. on the outside. And he's knocking on the door. Ah, yeah, so, right. That's coming to mind when I hear that God helps those who help themselves. So God's knocking on our door. <coughs> We've got to be able to open that door to make good use of that chariot. That we're yeah, that's it. If we don't open that door, yep. where where the ego is winning, so it is hard to discern. It. I mean, it, it is very hard. God never walked through streets. And it's, this is where oh, 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 to this day. I was in Dallas, Texas, and I wound up in a really bad part of town, and I was the only white person there. And this man came up to me and showed me a picture of his children, but his teeth, he was a drug addict, oh. mm -hmm. uh, like severely. And he showed me a picture of his kids, and I gave him 50 dollars or something, US dollars. US dollars. Yeah, oh, and yeah. he sucked me in. But after that, I thought, oh, 
Yeah, right. I kept getting the, the, the children's face. That's how we got people in. And I saw these children's face and I thought, I learned from that. I thought, what would I do again in that situation? And, I, and then I thought to myself, he's not helping himself though. So I can't help him. So you win some, you learn some. Ah, good, Chris. So, you win some, you learn some. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I, would, I would absolutely tackle that completely different now. Mm. But my discernment after it was just... It was, like, it was like a battle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, see, this whole world, we, we're getting easily manipulated, right? And, and the media is full of it. They, they, they go straight for the emotion instead of the rational or, or the logical. Right? They go straight, oh, they have little kid, kids crying in pictures and mothers helping with babies and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so we think these charity organisations do good, but really we are being manipulated. Yep. And, yep. and the only remedy against that is our internal discernment if we actually look towards God and then develop that kind of sensitivity internally to kind of have this little, little gut, what we call gut feeling in there, kind of like, is this the right thing, should I follow this, is there something else going on, hang on a moment, just wait for a second before you're going to suck in, because otherwise, as a person still, you, you're good and terrible, so many good, naive, well-intended people, and that you do, and that you do, and, that, and that's fine, as people, perfect, nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Yeah, on an individual level, but in terms of an external level, you know, some people are called into a little bit more more wisdom. They have a slightly different perspective. But like, you can do more good, but you have to have that discernment. In Which is why I, I like what pause. you say. Sorry, Sally. Like you said with the fear sermon last week, you, you yeah. pray about it and pause, pause, and then the message will come. When you're in peace, mm -hmm. make the decision when you're in peace. Yeah. No, you're, I think Sean said. Yeah, no, Sean was like, I just say, we, 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 all we have is our in, inner discernment yeah. and each other. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. the other thing. When yeah. we've got a good community of people, we're looking out for each other, iron sharpening iron. None of us has got all the answers, no. and we just keep, we keep sharpening each other and keep each other sharp. Yeah, and look out for each other. That's, that's the best like thing washing water over each other. <laughs> You're washing water over each other. Were you going to say something else, Sally? Or? No, Sean. Sure Sean was going to say something? Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Sean. Sure. Something is a, is a working man. Um, like 40 years ago, um, every one of us in China in Beijing, we are average earning $20 to $50 per month. What? Wow. We were poor. Uh, but wow. we were trying to look for a pair because we heard all overseas and our country and at the same time sharing so much as well. And so we saw almost everything prestigious society, uh, money, but, but you know, being movie star, we are much richer than, than average people. And uh, I, I give up everything but looking for a pair. Mm. But at that time, I did not know. Um, I thought it was the whole, everything good, money, and Yeah, my life, and the Sarah's life. There's your treasures. 
Yeah. People, people are the traitors. Yeah. People. Yeah. Right. People. Yeah. People. Right. Right. Yeah. When I would run to marry my parents, I ran to Sarah, uh, his uh, professor's uh, student, introduced me for me. Why? Arranged marriage. Why? Mm. Yeah. So, I first of all, <laughs> I break contribution. I, I, I introduce Jesus <laughs> to her. Yeah. And at that time, she would be her But Jesus has only become a Christian, uh, like a, a brother and sister. And then I would become a husband wife. And then we produce Mom and Dad. Yeah, so much. And then so this is a like a discord. Jesus and so many thousands of people that are benefited from this family. Mm. So I think the life is a changing life. No, it is a really uh, really treasure. So that. Beautiful. So the pearl. The pearl. <laughs> Any time people people say, oh, can you finish your task in this world? So. So that's the thing, yeah. isn't it? Each one of us. Just, just, just one of that. At, at, at just one, one more yeah, point in that, in one sense, picking up what you know, you're said right. before is right. That this world is very different to the next world, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of innocent people here yeah. that really, in a way that they ought to be able to express themselves, yeah. are unprotected and they need other people with discernment to actually guide and protect them. Good point. But if they were into the next world, if they get killed or taken early, they go to the spiritual world, they've got their free environment and they can be completely like that, yeah, right? Completely true. loving and open yeah. without any guards. But for most of us, we need our guards because this world is so, such a harsh environment in that sense, right? So there's a very big distinction between what we should be ideally mm -hmm. versus what we need to be in this world. And we're all, we're all carrying around a vacuum. They're all carrying around a vacuum, and it's, 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 it's a craving for love. Each one of us needs to be loved. And that's why when we discover how much the Lord really loves us and taste it, He becomes that pearl that we're looking for. Let's just go through the conclusion. I'll, I'll take it home real quick. We've gone a little over, but that's okay. And bought it to make one's own. So this is really, to me, this is the, the, the end of the parable. Is saying, you know, it, it's easy to say, I believe. But can we live a life where, as you were saying, Chris, you know, you get up and you have a ritual, a practice of focusing in on the Lord, and then you go out and do your thing for the day, and you're not totally smashed by a tsunami of sensual input, but you've got this little anchor inside you keeping you throughout the day, that little focus of New Jerusalem, as you were saying earlier. Yeah. And it's a challenge, but we, we, all, we all need to get better at doing that. Some of us are brilliant. I know Ian says his feet will not even touch the ground without at least saying good morning to the Lord. And he swings his feet around and talks to the Lord straight away. Wonderful. You know? But it's, it's a challenge, isn't it? It's definitely a tsunami of stuff out there to, to try and knock us off the path. Okay, so we've got to purchase this, this, uh, this lifestyle of seeking after the pearl. We must make it our own to practice the truth, to allow transformation through combat and victory. In conclusion, the advancing soul understands the need to take responsibility for one's own spiritual work, which is the opposite of faith alone, isn't it, Ian? You know? mm -hmm. uh, if there is to be any real and lasting transformation, the Lord has the power to do all things, yet he patiently waits for us to make the purchase with silver, spiritual truth, and gold, love for practicing the truth, to obtain the pearl of great price, the heavenly character the ego that comes from the presence of the word living in the heart. Thus we discover that to find the pearl of great price 
is to experience, experientially absorb into our souls the very life of the Lord and His Word. And all those who have tasted and seen that the Lord is good know firsthand where to find the secret gate to heaven and the way forward to that gate. It is the inner sense of the Word or the Logos. So here's our spiritual focus uh, till January. Try to catch yourself losing, uh, longing for something of this world's goods. Refrain, reframe it as that which is passing away. Oh, that Tesla, I really want that Tesla. Mmm, well, even Tesla. Like your own, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teslas pass away, all these things pass away. Catch yourself in the act of wanting something and just say, hmm, all of this world's passing away. Now see if you can elevate that longing up to a spiritual level with its higher value. In other words, what I'm saying here is when you're longing for something out there, it's really an expression of this vacuum for love that we all have. Each one of us has this vacuum inside us for love. I love each one of you guys. I think each one of you has something really unique and special about you. I'm so glad that I get to hang out with you all. I do. But you don't always know that. I'm not telling you that. You know, um, but when you spend time with God, He doesn't shut up about how much He thinks you're wonderful and loves you and just thinks you're great. We love you too. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. I always like it. That's all right. You're a, you're a, like is a form of uh, com, uh, a love too. You know? So, is there any final comments, thoughts, ideas? Guang, everything's good over there. Everything's good. Ian, are you okay? You've probably been sitting a little bit long. You want to get up and get moving? Let's say a quick prayer, shall we? Let's say, say after me, dear Lord, we thank you for this morning, for each other, but especially for your word. It shines light in our heart. It pours heat into our soul. It restores us and sends us on the path to New Jerusalem. Once again. Amen. Thank you, dear Jesus, for this word this morning. May it stay with us as we come into the, the fullness of Christmas this year. And Lord, may we just be sensitive to each other and each other's needs and uh, show that love and demonstrate your love to each other. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, let's, um, sorry, we went a little over. We'll get Ian up. We'll get Ian up out of the chair.